The next zipper that I want to show you today is the lapped zipper. Lapped zipper is found um, in pants and down the backs of dresses and the like. You have a row of top stitching that is visible to the outside of the garment, but the zipper itself is hidden underneath the seam allowance because the zipper is actually offset when you put it into the garment. We're going to begin with two pieces of fabric that have been marked for a one inch seam allowance at the top and the bottom. And unlike the invisible zipper, we are going to put the slot zipper into a seam that has already been constructed. In order to do that, I need to mark the bottom of my zipper. So I'm going to lay the zipper down on my fabric, matching the top edge of my zipper with the top edge of my fabric, and put a pin into the fabric at the bottom of the zipper, but at the top of the bottom stop. In this particular example, I'm going to have a very short seam. Begin the seam with a back tack. And I'm going to sew up to the pin, which marks the end of my seam, and I'm going to end with a back tack. Seam allowance must be pressed open. all the way to the top. I'm going to place the zipper face down on the seam allowance. And I'm going to roll my seam allowance over one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to pin baste it. And you can see that my pins are lying right along the lightly pressed seam line. This is going to create the underlap for our lapped zipper. I need to change the zipper foot. And 
I'm going to begin my stitching on that 1 8 of an inch that I folded over next to my zipper coil. I'm beginning my stitching at the bottom of the zipper. Begin with the back tack. And as you reach your pins, you can pull them out. When the zipper pull gets in the way, stop with your needle in the fabric, open your zipper, and then proceed. And with a back tack. Close your zipper, fold your seam allowance open the way it was pressed, and then you want to match the notches at the top of your zipper marking your one inch seam allowance. And you can pin it closed. Flatten your zipper out. Turn it over and examine it. Make sure that your seam line is lying nice and flat. And we're going to top stitch the second half of the zipper in. You may want to insert a pin from the right side through the top of your zipper tape to hold it flat because you're going to begin stitching at the top with the zipper open. You want your top stitching line to be at approximately one half inch. Begin with a back tack or a spot tack. And stitch down the edge of the zipper foot here is sliding right along the edge of the zipper coil and when you're down a couple of inches you can stop with your needle in the fabric raise your presser foot and close your zipper back up now you need to hold your zipper and your fabric taut to help prevent stretching. When you get to the bottom of your zipper placket, you want to stitch a couple of stitches beyond the bottom. Feel with your finger for that bottom stop, because you don't want to hit that with a needle. Pivot and sew at a right angle to your seam line. Count your stitches, three, four, five, six, so that when you back up, you can back up the same number of stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take your work out of the machine. Pull your needle thread to the wrong side of the fabric. Cut short. There you have lapped zipper. Give it a little bit of a press. And 
everything should lie nice and smooth. So there you have the lapped zipper, which is also known as a welt zipper, featuring a placket that's stitched on one side, and the zipper is under an overlap because we've offset it with our beginning stitching. The next zipper that we're going to do is a centered or a slot zipper. The zipper is centered in this placket so that each half of the zipper is totally covered with the seam allowance. It's a little bit trickier to put in, but it begins the same way. We have our fabric marked with an inch seam allowance top and bottom because we're going to be sewing our seam first place the zipper face down on your fabric, matching the top edge of your zipper with the top edge of your fabric. And we're going to put a pin in the fabric at the top of the bottom stop. The length of our seam is from the bottom of the fabric to our zipper. We're going to be Begin this with a regular zip with the regular presser foot. So we'll take off the zipper foot. The regular presser foot supports the fabric against the feed dogs on both sides of the needle. So it has a different purpose. and our seam with the back tack. And we're going to press this seam open as well. to make sure that you press the seam line all the way to the top of the placket, making sure that you maintain a nice even line. Give it a good press because we want it to lie nice and flat and maintain a nice crisp line. So we've got a nice sharp crease there on our seam line. I'm going to begin by placing my zipper face down but open. And I'm going to match the center of my zipper coil right along the folded edge of my placket and I'm going to pin baste to help it stay. Now it's important to maintain a one-to-one -one relationship along the distance of the zipper so we don't want to stretch the fabric and we don't want to stretch our zipper. And I'm going to put a pin at the top of the zipper on the opposite side. Change to presser foot. And I'm going to sew down one side of the zipper, across the bottom of the zipper, and then back up 
the other side. I'm going to want to count stitches when I make my pivot down here at the bottom so that I can have the same number of stitches on the other side of the seam allowance so that I maintain two parallel rows of top stitching to hold this. I'm going to stitch this at just under one half of an inch. If I stitch it as tight as a quarter of an inch, I'm going to get a hump in the seam allowance over the coil, but I want it to lie nice and flat. By the same token, if I stitch it at a half an inch wide, my slot is going to look too wide. So I'm going to sew this at about three-eighths of an inch. And I'm going to begin with the back tack. And I'm going to carefully watch the folded edge of my fabric and keep it right in line with the zipper coil because I want the two sides of the zipper to meet and I want the two edges of fabric to meet but not overlap. And once I get a bit of distance on this, I am going to reach behind so that I can support both the zipper and the fabric together to help maintain that one-to-one -one relationship. It may be necessary for you to remove your pin. As long as you've got something to hang on to, that's fine. As I near the bottom of the zipper, I'm going to stop with my needle in the fabric, raise the presser foot, and close my zipper so I don't have to stitch around that zipper pull. When I get to the bottom of the placket, I'm going to pivot the fabric and I'm going to count the number of stitches to center. One, two, three, four. Then I need to come four stitches across the seam allowance. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to pivot and come up the opposite side. I'm going to smooth the top so that I can make sure that the two sides of my seam line are matching over the top of the zipper and everything is lying nice and smooth. Once I've come up a couple of inches, then I'm going to open my zipper When I get to the top, I'm going to end with a back tack. Close and check and make sure that everything lies nice and flat and smooth and that we've got good coverage over the entire length of the zipper. And there you have a slot zipper insertion. Going along with the zippers <coughs> is how to finish the top edge of the fabric. And I'm going to show you today how to put a facing on a waistline of a small skirt that I've made here where I've got an invisible zipper inserted. This is a neat industry technique here where we don't have a lot of excess fabric at the top. It gives us a nice and neat uh, finish at the top of the waistline, the top of the zipper. This particular facing is called an applied facing because it's a separate piece of fabric that has been cut and shaped to fit the top edge of your garment. In this case, it's a skirt waistline. And you see that there is curve in this over the entire distance. Now I've gone ahead and completed our skirt. I've sewn darts in the front waist and in the back waist. 
I have closed the side seams on both sides and my zipper is already installed. You'll recall from our invisible zipper lesson that putting the zipper in, in this case, is one of the very first steps that we follow. At this point, my facing is exactly the same length around the waistline that my skirt is. So I'm going to begin by matching my side seams on my skirt and the side seams on my facing. And I'm going to pin. On the opposite side, I'm matching my seam lines exactly. And when I open out my zipper at the back of the skirt, you'll see that my skirt and my facing are the same width. The first step I need to do is to trim some of the excess off on this facing. So I'm going to trim off about a half an inch. So now the facing is about a half of an inch shorter. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. And once it's trimmed short, then I'm going to put that newly trimmed edge right alongside the edge of my seam here. And I'm going to pin it. And you'll see that all of a sudden, my skirt has gotten longer than my facing. I'm going to pin the other side as well. <clears throat> and I'm going to stitch along the facing here. Stitch the facing to the zipper tape to the skirt seam allowance. You want to do this about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the zipper tape. And you're going to begin with the back tack, of course. stitch same on the opposite side and I'm going to end it with the back tack Now, I'm ready to sew around the waistline. And since my skirt is bigger than my facing, I am going to wrap the skirt right around the zipper coil. So if you can peek in here, right here, give me a close up on that. I have flattened out the facing and the skirt is actually wrapping around the coil of the zipper. Now I can pin and I'm going to pin over my darts to help make sure that they're going to stay in the direction that they've been pressed. I will pin across the darts on the front. And 
the darts going across the back. And then on this side, I'm going to wrap the skirt around the coil of the zipper again. <clears throat> Change to the regular presser foot. I'm going to begin sewing around the waistline seam with a back tack at the beginning. Making sure that my seam allowances are staying nice and flat and the darts are not getting twisted as I sew over them. Raise your work and check. Make sure that everything's lying nice and flat under there. I'm coming around the back. Now before I trim, grade, and clip the seam going around the waistline, I'm going to pop the facing so that it's right side out. And I'm going to check to make sure that both sides of the zipper are the same length. than they are. So I'm good to go on the remainder of the installation. Okay, now this is just like our, our concave seam. So the seam allowance has to stretch as it goes around the waist when we've turned this right side out. So I need to reduce some of the bulk in the waistline seam. So I'm going to trim and grade this seam line. The skirt seam allowance is the one that is going to remain the longest. And I'm beveling with my scissors. So I'm getting two different widths on the remaining seam allowance. This helps spread the bulk out so that it will lie flatter. You can see I've got two different widths on my seam allowance here. Now I need to clip the curve. And as I come to bulk at the seam allowances, I'm going to trim that out just by clipping on the 
diagonal. And I'm only clipping one layer of fabric at a time here. Right now I'm clipping the facing seam allowance only. As I get to the seam allowance at the side seam, I'm going to clip that on the diagonal to reduce the bulk with that fabric. Turn my skirt over and now I'm going to clip the skirt seam allowance and I'm going to take care to offset my clips so that I don't have two clips sitting right on top of each other. And I'm going to trim out the excess bulk at the top of the darts. And when I get to the side seams, I'm going to trim the bulk away from the seam allowances. get to the darts on the front. I'm going to reduce the bulk there. You want to be careful not to clip your waistline seam line, however. Oops. I wasn't quite good enough at getting that out flat. I've got a seam allowance that's flopped over, so I'm going to take this opportunity to open that back up and stitch it right down. So it lays flat. If I didn't do this, that would leave kind of a wad of fabric there that would show through to the outside. Now there's no need to back tack on that little area there because I have overlapped a couple of stitches when I started and when I ended. So that overlapping is going to, to hold it. So now as this curve turns around in the opposite direction, which it's going to do when we turn it right side out, the clips are allowing that seam allowance to spread. But if you look carefully, you can see that each one of these clips has another piece of fabric underneath it so that we're not going to get any large divots on the outside of the garment when we press it when we're finally finished. You may also want to Trim down some of the bulk over the top of the zipper. You pop it right side out. And 
Now we're ready to understitch the seam. So I want to make sure that my seam allowances are going to all fall to the right and I'm going to pull the facing of the skirt over the top of them and I'm going to stitch on the facing through two layers of seam allowance. I'm going to begin with a bit of a back tack and as I do my understitching I'm going to be checking to make sure that my seam allowance is lying out flat and that my facing is lying smoothly over the top and I'm actually going to be pulling with my left hand on the skirt and with the right hand on my facing so I can begin to see the stitches of my waistline seam and I'm going to line the waistline seam line up with the inside edge of the left toe of my presser foot. That's going to put my needle down about a sixteenth of an inch away from the seam line. Check and make sure that your seam allowances are lying to the facing side and nothing's getting flipped around in the opposite direction under there. You're not going to be able to get right into the corner of the facing at the top of the zipper, so you can maybe get to within an inch and a half of the zipper and back tack. Clip your needle thread close. Use your bobbin thread to pull the needle thread to the inside. that facing back out. Trim on the opposite side of the opening. Trim your needle thread close. Then use your bobbin thread to pull your needle thread to the underneath side. Now, if I did a good job, you can see I don't have any of the little clips along my seam line flipping down into my skirt. Everything has been stitched up to the facing, which is as it should be. The next step is going to be to tack our facing to the garment so that it doesn't roll to the outside. So to do that, I'm going to use my finger and my thumb and I'm going to pinch part of my dart leg and my facing together so that I can kind of turn it around a little bit and stitch right on the dart intake to my facing. Take three or four stitches. Trim the threads nice and close. I'm going to come along to the side seam and I'm going to match 
the side seam on my facing with the side seam on my skirt and I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to be a little bit easier here because I have more to hang on to. Putting my finger underneath my seam allowance and then using my thumb to grab the facing and the seam allowance together. Turning it face down, but I'm holding it down tight so I haven't lost where I pinched it. And I'm going to stitch on the seam allowance three or four stitches to tack it. Going to smooth around and I'm going to do the same thing at the darts toward the front. again. Now when you're doing this you want to be careful that you're stitching just to the dart intake or to the seam allowance of your skirt because we don't want these to show on the outside of the garment. So the, take, the facing has been tacked to the garment so that it won't roll to the outside and yet you don't see any of that stitching on the outside of the garment because it's all happened on the seam allowance and the facing or the dart intake and the facing. All we need to do now is just to give a press around the waistline of our skirt and our waistline is done. The trick on this was trimming the seam allowance of the facing at the very beginning. Remember that half inch we trimmed off? That's where it was, right there. So we have created a nice clean finish here at the corner without a lot of additional bulk and it looks nice and neat on the outside of our skirt. If you look very carefully here, you can see the waistline seam line and it's actually occurring on the inside of the skirt. Here's our understitching and that's what's holding that seam line 
to the inside. So on the outside of our garment, you've got a beautiful and clean finished edge. So this was an applied facing with the additional trick of finishing it for an invisible zipper. Our next facing is going to be what we call an extended facing. This is a shirt front, if you will, that's meant to button closed and have a 5 8 inch overlap so that when the centers of the fronts are aligned, we've got 5 8 of an inch on either side of center. Our extended facing has been cut as a single piece of fabric. So here we have the facing portion of the garment and I have already fused interfacing to it. We have both halves of the front and the front is marked with a notch at the fold line and a notch on either side of the fold which is at 5 eighths of an inch which shows our center line and then we have a notch at the mid neckline and a notch for our shoulder seam. On our facing and we have the same notches occurring on our shirt front. Center front, mid neck, and shoulder seam. The back of our shirt has an applied facing so we're going to join the applied facing to the extended facing and then complete our neckline. We have notches showing our shoulder seams and a notch at center back. These notches are going to help us keep our pieces together so that they go together correctly. Our first step is going to be to put our applied facing, our back neck facing, to our front neck facing, which is the extended facing. So we're going to join it at the seam, at the shoulder seam, matching our notches. And we're going to begin and end with a good back tack. Because we, when we trim and clip that around the neckline edge, we don't want that shoulder seam to come apart. So we're joining the right sides. Of our facings together. Now we want to join our fronts to our back at the shoulder. Again, you want to use good back tack there.
Okay, so we've got basically a circle completed here. <coughs> I need to press all four shoulder seams open. from the right side and make sure that everything is lying nice and flat and smooth. If it's not, I want to give it a little bit more help. complete this, I'm going to want to match my notches at the center back neck. I find it easiest to start at center and move to one side. And that way if I've made a mistake, I have only got to go half of the distance to correct it. Then I'm going to match my shoulder seams. notch at the mid neckline and my notches at center front. And the edge of my facing is going to help um, maintain a nice clean crisp edge because it's fused right to the fold line. I'm going to come back to the other side match my shoulder seams, the mid neckline notch, and center fronts. Going with the so I'm going to start and run it. I'm not sure I'm going to this is going to be the side to bail out. I'll lift to over and it's going to be a tight because the only lip has tighter the get a clip to the lip. Is that a small of the bulk there? garment right side out because we want to check and make sure that your neckline edges are going to match. If you have a little bit of trouble getting your corners popped out, you can carefully use the point scissors if you don't have a point turner. And we're going to want and make sure the sink. But if look and cut down, we move up. 
standard that my center fronts match for stitching. Again, my seam on the facing side. My seam on the left toe of the front. None of those little clipped pieces are flopping back to the wrong side. My seam line, so I can sort this neckline seam line. That's what really helps the understitching to roll the seam line to the inside of the garment where it doesn't show. I'm not going to be able to get all the way to the corner, so I'm going to have to stop about an inch, inch and a half out. End with a back tack. Clip your needle thread, then pull your bobbin thread to get your needle thread to come back to the underneath side so you don't have any little tails winging around outside. For people to look at. You want to check and make sure that everything is going to lie nice and flat. Now, if you look here at the shoulder seam of the applied facing and ended facing, you can see that I've got some seam kind of hanging out there and it doesn't look very attractive. When I tack my facing, I am going to fold that back in and under and I'm going to hold it the inside of the garment like that. It's going to neaten up. On this other side, hold that little wing up, side, and let the seam line so it's out of the way, nice clean. There, Grab seam allowance of my shoulder seam, my thing. I do my back tack. My tacks don't show on the outside of. My garment is lying very nicely the way that it should be. The face size and the same as the neckline. If don't make no funny thing on it, you're not going to lie on the line. Finish this up. You cut the entering fold line to help me in that nice and down the front of the shirt. you have it. And applying the neckline of a shirt. Now we could add a collar to this and when we do our camp shirt project we will be. In which case the collar would go onto the shirt neck before the facing did. But this gives us a very nice clean finish on the edge. I'd like to thank you for your attention today covered ended and applied facings, invisors, hot zippers, and lapped zippers. Our next is going to bring waist and then we'll to our hand. Thank you.